let's jump into chapter two. So we're gonna find nice ways of organizing and displaying data. Um, so that'll be like tables and graphs in this chapter. Uh, it can make things easier to deal with and look at and make better conclusions. So let's start with a quick definition. Raw data is just data listed in the order it was collected. It can be very hard to spot meaningful patterns in raw data. Um, and so one thing we like to do is usually organize it into tables. We'll do graphs later in the chapter. So before I jump into the next example, if you look at the little table below, that's raw data. Uh, it's just numbers, there's no pattern, right? It's just hard to come up with patterns. So we're gonna reorganize it. So we're looking at the owner of Everything Grows. In, it's a plant business in Danville. Um, they wanna increase traffic on the website. So they pay for a search engine optimization. So this will make them like pop up better on a search engine like Google. Um, so they randomly sample 18 days. So that's our sample. We have 18 days in our sample um, after the optimization was completed and they had the following number of hits. So these would be like 27 visits to the website. The next day was 37 visits to the website, right? Another day had 33 visits to the website. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and we're gonna make a group data table. So we'll check that out in a second. Before we make tables, we're gonna figure out what the variable is and the type. We went over the type of variable in chapter one because um, we might organize things a little bit differently depending on the type. So in this case, our variable would be the number of hits or number of visits, if you don't like that word. And the type is like, is it a category? Is it a number? Um, so these are all numbers. And I think there are gaps because you can't have like half of a visit or 0.75 of a visit, right? You can have one visit or two visits or three visits. So if you don't remember, this was called discrete. There are gaps. Right, discrete is numerical data, but it has gaps. And so you'll see below, I started something called a group data table. So our first column will be the variable. So I'm gonna label it in pink just to remind us what this is. So we'll always put the variable in the first column. So that's the number of hits. Um, frequency we'll go over in a second. Um, and then relative frequency and midpoint we'll get into. So let's start with the variable. So we're gonna group it. Um, the numbers are just so spread out, so it looks like we have as low as five and as high as 37. So if I were to make a table with single numbers, right, it's gonna take a long time to get to 37. It's gonna be a really long table. So instead what we do is we group the numbers. So we group five through nine. So then the next one would start at 10, because 10 is the next number available, and it needs to be the same size. So five through nine would be, what, four numbers, right? Five plus four is nine. So this would be 10 through 14. Notice it's the same size as five through nine. Otherwise, it's kind of a misleading table. And let's keep going. So the next one would start at 15, because we stopped at 14, now we jumped to 15. And so 15 plus four would be 19, right? Notice again, it's the same size. Why did it change that? And we'll keep going 15 through 19, right? Then we'll jump to 20 through 24, right? Cause we're adding four, 25 through 29, 30 through 34 and 35 through 39. And you'll notice this first column goes by fives. So five, 10, 15, 20. So there is a pattern. So let me show you how frequency works. So frequency is just how many times does something show up? So five through nine means five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So I have a five, I have a six, and I have a nine. And that's how I came up with three. There are three numbers that show up. 10 through 14, we have 11, 11, and 13, and that's how I came up with three. It looks like 15 through 19 never shows up. 20 through 24, I found 21, I found 23, and I found 22. So there's three numbers. 
So let's do the next one. I didn't do 25 through 29. So anything between 25 and 29 will count. So 27, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I see 29, and that's it. So there's two. 30 through 34, any number 30, 31, 32, 33, or 34. So I see a 31, I see a 33, a 33, I see a 32. So this one would also be three. There's just a lot of threes, it's just a coincidence. And then we can just confirm, yeah, there's three left over for 35 through 39. And that's frequency. So I'll formally define these in a second, but that's what frequency is. Um, and what we like to do is we like to find total frequency. So I'm gonna add up this column. So three plus three plus zero plus three plus two plus three, and then plus three. I lost, I am, I got 17, which is incorrect because there's 18 days. So that's a good way to check our work. Where did we go wrong? And some of you might've already caught this, right? That purple one, I actually had four and I said three. So we always like to check the total and that's how we'll catch our mistakes. And now the total is 18. So the total is important, but it's also a really good way to check your work, right? So this number should match the total for the sample size. So if you make a mistake, you're almost always gonna find it by calculating that total. Cool. Um, so let's jump into relative frequency. So relative frequency, I'm gonna pull the calculator up. Uh, darn it, why did I do that? There we go. There we go. Oh, why does it wanna do this? There we go. Okay, we got the calculator. Sorry for the delay. Maybe that gave you a second to catch up. So relative frequency, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the frequency divided by the total. So you'll see for the first one, I did three divided by 18, and I got 0.1667. So basically it's like how many out of the total, right? The next one would be three divided by 18. We get the same number. Um, zero out of 18, should be clear that it's zero. Um, three out of 18, we get that 0.1667 again, right? We're rounding up because we have a six to the right. Um, for the next column, we'll do two divided by 18, frequency divided by total. So we will write 0.1111, and I'm gonna do four decimal places because all the others had four decimal places. So we're gonna be consistent. Um, four divided by 18 for the next one, 0.2222. And then that last one we already did, but three divided by 18 is 0.1667, right? Again, it rounds up. Let's find the total one more time because the total is actually interesting for this column as well. So I'm gonna add this column up. So 0 0.1667, 0 0.1667. It's the same whether you put the zero in front or not. This zero in front means the same thing. So plus zero, plus 0.1667, plus 0.1. And then one, six, six, seven, and I get 1.0001. And we will learn that this number is almost always um, one. It's slightly off because of rounding. And the one is representing 100%. 100% in decimal form is one. Cool. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's find midpoints. So midpoint is just the middle point of the endpoints. So five through nine. So what I do is I do five plus nine, and I'm gonna divide them by two to average them out, and I get seven. Next one would be 10 plus 14, right? And then divide by two, we're finding the middle, right? The middle in this case would be the average. So we add them up and divide by two. 15 plus 19. And divide by 2, so 17 is in the middle of 15 and 19. 20 plus 24, right, divide by 2, you get 22. So it's the middle number. So you might see a pattern 
Um, but otherwise, we'll do the final two. Um, 25 plus 29 and divide by two. Um, you can't type everything at once on the calculator. So you're gonna do 25 plus 29, enter. You get 54 and divide by two and you get 27. And that makes sense, right? 27 is in the middle of 25 and 29. So 30 plus 34 for the next one, divide by two. You get 64, hit enter, and then divide by two. And you get 32. And again, that makes sense, right? 32 is in the middle of 30 and 34. Um, and then the total doesn't make sense here, so don't find it. No reason to find the total. And that is a group data table. Um, we'll look at some more and then we'll see that you can kind of make more meaningful conclusions. So I'm gonna go through the definitions and then um, we'll save the next example for the next video. Um, but the lower cut point is the left boundary of each class description. So these are my class descriptions. Just how are we describing the groups? So like 5, 10, 15, 20 are my left endpoints. And then the upper cut points are the right ones. So that would be like 9, 14, 19, etc. Right? The other one was 5, 10, 15, etc. Right? So the left side versus the right side, right? Lower and upper. Um, frequency is the number of items in a class. So we just did that, right? We counted how many things, how many times something showed up. The word class is just kind of a fancy word for group. Relative frequency, we call it a ratio because it's division, right? Um, we put it in decimal form. Um, it's the ratio of the number of items each in each class to the total. So essentially it's frequency divided by total if we want to get rid of the long sentence. And I rounded to four on purpose. So anytime we round relative frequency, it will be at least four decimal places. So at least four means you have four or more. So less than four is considered not enough. So just always have at least four. So a couple more definitions and then we'll take a little break. Um, so the midpoint, we calculated the midpoint um, by taking an average of the lower and the upper cut point. Right, so in terms of math, it's lower plus upper, and we divide by two because there's two numbers, and that looks like tupper. There we go. We consider this a representative value for the group, so we'll see what that means later. But sometimes we need a single value, and so the midpoint will be useful later. Um, the width will be the difference between consecutive left endpoints or cut points. So the width wasn't four. Um, so it's tempting to say the width is four because five through nine, um, but the width is actually five through 10, as weird as that is. So the width of these is actually five. And if you think about it, there's five numbers. Five, if you count with me, five, six, seven, eight, nine is actually five numbers. So the width would be five. So the difference between 10 and five is five. So our width above in example one, the width was five. And then we took all this information to make a group data table. Um, so we have the classes, that was the variable in the first column. Um, frequencies with a total at the bottom. Relative frequencies also have a total and then midpoints if it makes sense. So we'll see some examples where midpoints don't make sense. Um, when we want to group continuous data, which we will see in the next video, um, we're going to use a new symbol. So we'll see that in the next video. And that symbol is read as through less than. So it means we're going to get really close to the number, but not quite. So wait to the next video to see that. Um, but we're replacing the dash with this new symbol. And the main reason for this change is to avoid um, gaps and to produce a more accurate midpoint. So we'll check that out in the next video.